So in the first part of the visual system lecture, we talked about the primary function of the visual system, um, the uh, pathologies, and now we're going to talk about eye movements and the objectives of, of eye movements and the vestibular ocular reflex. So um, there are two objectives of eye movements. Um, one of them is keeping the position of the eyes stable during head movements. So when you move your head around, your eyes have to be able to stay stable, um, and the eye movement system does that. And then directing the gaze, your gaze at visual targets. So you see um, something moves in your periphery, you direct your gaze to that. Um, gaze stabilization, or um, visual fixation it's also called, um, during head movements is achieved by the vestibular ocular reflex, which we'll talk about in a minute, and um, optokinetic nystagmus. So we talked briefly, just in terms of definition, about nystagmus is um, involuntary movement of the pupils, um, involuntary movement of the eyes. Um, pathological nystagmus is um, a sign of cerebellar dysfunction or vestibular dysfunction. Optokinetic nystagmus is the normal movement of our eyes. So if you fix your eyes on something and turn your head to the right, your eyes will automatically move to the left to keep your eyes fixed on that um, object that you're looking at. So it, that's that optokinetic nystagmus keeps the position of your eyes stable during the head movements. So if we didn't have that, we moved our head, our, our gaze would change and we would lose sight of that object. So keeping the head, um, keeping the eye position stable during head movements is um, really an important um, objective of eye movements. So the direction of gaze is the other um, objective of eye movements, and it's accomplished by um, three different systems. One of them is called saccades, which are fast movements that switch gaze from one object to another. So the eyes move very quickly from one object to another. Smooth pursuits are eye movements that follow a moving object. So say that you're standing at the side of the road and you're um, waiting to cross the street and cars are going by. You're not moving your head and your eyes are following each car as it goes past. And then, and that, so that's a smooth pursuit. And, and then as that car gets out of your visual field, you do a fast movement to switch gaze to the next car. That's saccades. So smooth pursuits follows the one car and then a saccade quickly to switch to the next car. So um, that's important for avoiding getting hit by cars. Um, vergence movements are movements of the eyes toward or away the, from the midline to adjust to different um, dif distances between the eyes and the visual target. So in order to focus on the visual target, the closer it gets to you, the more your eyes have to converge, go in towards the midline, and the farther away, the more they have to diverge, go away from the midline. So one of the tests that you do is a um, convergence test where you have someone focus on an object, you bring it closer and closer in, and you measure the distance at which they report it either becomes blurry or becomes two objects. You know, So if you take your thumb right now, hold it out at arm's length and look at you, look at it, bring it in, you'll find that at some point the thumb becomes two thumbs <laughs> or it gets blurry. And that is your um, convergence distance. So vestibular ocular reflexes help to stabilize visual images during head movements. Vestibular uh, receptors for the VOR are, are in our vestibular apparatus, the three fluid-filled tubes inside of each inner ear, and they're called semicircular canals. Um, stimulating a pair of semicircular canals induces eye movements in roughly the same plane as the canals. So the vestibular system and the vision system are linked in order to help stabilize visual images during head movements. Optokinetic nystagmus adjusts eye position during slow head movements. So um, the examples when you're walking, your head moves relative to objects in the environment. Um, and it's elicited by moving visual stimuli. Um, it allows the eyes to follow large objects in the visual field. So um, that's just our natural um, 
normal nystagmus, and then pathological ny nystagmus is caused by um, some kind of dysfunction. So physiological nystagmus, that's the normal response that can be elicited by an intact nervous system by optokinetic stimulation, rotational or temperature stimulation of the semicircular canal. So they can uh, run cold or hot water on your semicircular canals and get physiological nystagmus. Um, or if you move your eyes to extreme horizontal position, you might get a little jump um, from your physiological nystagmus. Pathological nystagmus is a sign of nervous system abnormality. So there's a problem either in the um, visual system, the vestibular system, or possibly the brain stem. Direction of gaze um, can be influenced, the eye movements can be influenced by auditory information, vestibular ocular reflex, visual stimuli, sensory information from the extraocular muscles, and the emotions um, system. So lots of things can um, affect your direction of gaze. Um, when we're reading or other activities where the visual object is near, the eyes are aimed towards the midline to allow the image to fall in corresponding areas of the retina so we can um, sync the, the two images from the two eyes and have a clear vision. So sometimes after um, concussions, which are mild traumatic brain injuries, um, or um, more severe traumatic brain injuries, you can um, have where convergence is disordered and um, people can't focus and they might have diplopia, uh, diplopia or blurred vision. Motion sickness is um, nausea, headache, anxiety, and vomiting experienced in move, moving vehicles. For, my, for the example for me is being on a boat. Um, that, when I think of being on a boat, I think of barfing over the side because um, motion sickness uh, my motion sickness is extremely um, aggravated on a boat or sometimes in a moving vehicle. I'm a little bit better about that now than when I was a kid. But it's, it can be caused by conflict of different types of sensory information or by postural instability. Um, seasickness um, is caused by a conflict between vis uh, visual and vestibular information. So a lot of times your vestibular system is going, oh God, we're moving, we're moving, and the visual system's like, no we're not, I'm looking at something that's fixed. And so then you're um, hanging over the rail barfing, <laughs> in my case. So some people are super sensitive to this, and some people it doesn't bother them at all. So um, a lot of times that mismatch between um, vestibular and visual information, you get conflict between those different types of information, that's what causes motion sickness.